I decided to make myself a brand new belt for medieval reenactment, and here it is. It cost me less than $40 Australian to make, and the parts, the components are absolutely fantastic. I'm very, very, very happy with the outcome. It only took a couple of hours of work, if that. So it's a very simple project for anybody to do, and you don't need complicated tools. Let's take a look. The raw materials that I'm gonna use for this belt is a belt as in here, which is a veggie tan or vegetable tanned leather belt, which I've just cut from leather. I'm doing a medieval belt. So obviously I'm gonna use some furniture which is appropriate for that. So this is a, a belt end and it comes with two small rivets which locate into the holes as seen. Sometimes that's a little fiddly, but that's okay. So the period that I do is 13th century. So obviously you need to get the appropriate hardware for that. A belt buckle of the same, which is matching. And we also know from history and from illustrations, from iconography and from uh, all sorts of other aspects of history that medieval people like to decorate their stuff. So things like belts would be decorated with these, which sometimes known as rosettes. This has a post in the back of it. And all you do is you sandwich the leather between that, into that post. Rather put the post into, the, into a hole in the leather, put the rivet down and then punch that flat. We'll do that a little bit later on. Uh, alrighty, so we've got uh, hardware here for our belt. I'm using a piece of, it's about 2.5 millimeter or maybe thereabouts. This is vegetable tanned leather, sometimes called veggie tanned leather. I've got a buckle and an end here which are appropriate for my period, which is the 13th century. So the 1200s basically. Uh, I just purchased these from a company called Make Your Own Medieval. Now we also know from iconography, from illustrations and descriptions that medieval people loved to decorate their stuff. And so this is a, sometimes called a rosette. This will go into a hole in the leather, which we'll show you later on. And then, um, there's a washer on the flip side, if you like, and that's just kind of riveted down so that it fits nice and snugly. We'll put those things to one side just for now. Alrighty, so the tools that we're gonna use for a project such as this, I use a nice sharp retractable knife, a hole punch, a hammer, a nice solid straight edge, a lighter, some thread. I used wax linen thread my stylus, a stitch groover, an edge, a burnisher, sorry, an edge beveler, a hole punch for the rivets, and I've also got my swivel knife. Nice and simple, very simple toolkit there. Only cost you probably like $25, $30 to pick up a kit like this, maybe a fraction more, uh, and nice and easily readily available. Alrighty, okay, let's get started. Now that we've cut our belt, what we're going to do is just use the edge beveler. And this just creates a nice smooth edge and I go all the way along on both sides. So we now have a really nice smooth finish on our edges. What I'm gonna do is just mark off where we want the posts to go. 
Just going to use a slightly oversized punch. I say oversized. It's just larger than what it probably needs to be. The belt goes into the buckle and then the posts go down. Simply testing for fit at this stage. So we're just going to put on the uh, buckle now. So we slide that into the belt into the buckle and then we just find the rivets go into the holes that we made earlier. This is a little fiddly. So we'll just use an awl to see what we can find. All right, there's the first one. Just push the, uh, the rivet through just a little bit more and just hammering that into place. The soft brass bends nicely and that's just gonna hold everything in place permanently now. And we've just done the same on the tag. The next stage is dyeing the belt. So I'm going to use a Leathercraft dye, which I purchased from a company called Mac Lace Leather. These guys are really cool. They're, um, they really know what they're doing, talking about. They're based in uh, a place called Capalabar in Brisbane, which is Queensland, Australia. For anyone who might be sort of local or looking for something, as uh, some of the leather crafting stores have closed down and that's a real shame. All right, so just being really careful with the dye bottle. So I use a sponge applicator. So everything's now kind of done that can be done in terms of we've um, beveled the edge of the leather to make it nice and smooth. We have pre made all the necessary holes for the buckle and the tag of the belt and the posts for the rosettes and so now all we're doing is just dyeing the leather on a nice warm day like today it's only mid 20s so it's a, it's a really nice day outside so i'm using a nice dark brown color which is a good contrast to uh, the rest of my, my kit, my um, impression or my garb, depending on how you want to describe it. Some people might call it a costume. I'm not a big fan of the word costume, not really. Um, I think that garb is a, is a better sort of generic term. It's not really a uniform because I'm, I'm not serving so much that kind of thing, but uh, Okay, and obviously I do the other side of the belt as well. And by doing it this way, this just allows everything to dry in nicely before I use a lacquer. Depending on how dark you want your belt to be, you might choose to dye it several times over. And obviously you can use all sorts of different colors from whites through to yellows and browns and greens and blues and even blacks are all appropriate to the medieval period although I think brown would have been by far the most common as I say always be really careful with your dye bottles they, uh, they can spill and then because it's a dye it gets everywhere all right so now I'm going to use a lacquer lacquers are really simple and obvious what you do with them it simply protects the leather from the elements in Queensland, Australia, it's obviously very warm and humid most of the year. And so having something that'll protect it from that moisture is really important. And this all just dries off nice and quick. I've marked out for my waist belt holes. Just simply place the punch in the middle of the belt width and just strike down nice and firmly. Obviously 
medieval reenactment means that sometimes it's cold, other times not so much. So it's important to let yourself have a little bit of extra room. To insert one of these, it's very simple. We just locate the hole, place the post in the hole, and place the washer in behind. I now trim the post back uh, pretty much as much as I can. And for that, I just use a small pair of bolt cutters and then just peen that down until it looks like this. And then we have a nice secure rosette on the back of our belt. I was just using this piece of wood for the riveting, but I found this small little anvil really quite helpful. And then just use a nice ball peen hammer and everything gets locked in. That is not going anywhere. Oh, I'm so happy with that. The rosettes look amazing, nice and firmly put into place. This little anvil is coming in so useful for stuff like this. I'm only a renter, unfortunately, um, as so many people are in Australia these days. The cost of living is just getting a bit crazy. But this has come up so well. This is a really simple project to do. It has probably cost me, I would say, $25 in all the materials that I've used. And it's probably taken me about an hour and a half or so of work, as well as obviously the filming. Um, but from that, I've got a fantastic item, which is period accurate for me, which I'm a medieval reenactor, so it's, it's pretty important. Um, but for those of you who do LARP and SCA, it's not quite as important. Not all the time anyway. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. And I'll catch you in my next video.